Okay, I think the numbers, the number is quite good, approaching 100. Now we have 87. I think uh, it's time for us to start because uh, the watch that I have with me right now is showing uh, 5 past 10 o'clock in the morning. So again, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to all participants of today's webinar which is organized by Malaysian Board of Technologies, MBOT. So before we begin our webinar, I would like to share with all respected participants. Oh, I forgot to turn off my camera. Turn on my camera, sorry. Okay, so before we begin our webinar, I would like to share with all respected uh, participants the house rules of today's event to ensure the smoothness of our session this morning. So first of all, all participants are kindly requested to mute your microphones. So if you currently have your microphone on, please turn off, turn them off and please turn off your webcams. I can see some of the participants are currently having their webcams on. So I would like to request you to turn off your webcam. And number two, participants can turn on your microphone during the question and answer session, Q&A session, which is right after the presentation of the speaker. Participants are not allowed to present your screen during the session. Let just the presenter to present his screen. And number four, for our respected speaker, we, we don't just have the house rule for the audience, but we also have one dedicated house rule for the respected speaker, which is Dr. Amir. You will be required to turn off your webcam video while presenting. So now it's okay, we can see Dr. Amir's face, but while you're presenting, uh, you will be required to turn off your webcam while presenting and leaving only your microphone and your screen sharing on, showing your PowerPoint presentation. So a little bit to promote MBOT registration, I would like to use this opportunity to invite the respected participants of today's event who have qualified but have not yet registered to please register yourself with MBOT under the available four categories, uh, graduate technologies, professional technologies, qualified technicians or certified technicians. So for further information on the details and requirements of registration, please visit MBOT's website, which is www.mbotmbot.org.my. Next, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Rashdan Ben Saad. I will be your moderator for today. I am currently a lecturer at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Pertahanan Nasional Malaysia, UPNM. I am also a registered member of MBOT, Alhamdulillah, as a professional technologist. So the details of our webinar for today and the title of uh, our session today is quite interesting. Uh, it's given Nano X beyond the buzzword. Okay, so Nano X eh? beyond the buzzword, which is organized under MBOT technology fields of nanotechnology at, that will be presented by our respected speaker for today, which is Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Amir Shahir bin Amir Hamza. I would also like to outline the three main objectives of today's webinar. The first one, the first objective is to increase awareness about the potential of nanotechnology in helping our life, to provide the correct understanding about nanotechnology and approaches in nanotech, and finally to widen the horizon on the applications of nanotechnology. Good news, please also be informed that CPD points will be awarded to the registered participants of today's webinar. So this is a happy good news that we have for this morning. And the flow of the webinar today, the first part is the opening by the moderator, which is um, what, what I'm currently doing. 
Number two, the next one is then the speaker will be presenting the topic for 30 minutes, three zero minutes. And then we will open the floor for question and answer session, Q&A session from the audience for 10 minutes. And finally, the closing of this webinar. So before I hand the microphone or I hand the session to the speaker, I would like to briefly introduce the speaker for today. Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Amir Shahir bin Ami Hamza completed his PhD in 2010 at Tokyo Institute of Technology, Japan. In 2011, he worked as a lecturer for a Japanese for Japanese University's preparation program at Mara Higher Skill College in Buranam before moving to University Putra, Malaysia, UPM in 2012 as a senior lecturer. In August 2019, he was promoted to the position of associate professor. He has graduated one PhD and eight Master of Science student, MSc students. He also has secured eight research grants worth of 715,000 ringgit as a project leader and help on other five grants worth of 1,000, sorry, 1,342,000 as core researcher. Moreover, he also received three international research grants from JASO, which I believe is from Japan, and Radiation Effects Research Foundation. He has authored 30 scientific articles in highly reputable refereed journals and two book chapters. And based on Google Scholar database, his, his H index is currently 11. Well, this is very outstanding. And he has received altogether 334 times of citation. Dr. Ahmed also has filled six patents and two of them uh, were, currently, were already published and he also established a spin-off company named Nano Arms in the Amber Hut to commercialize one of the innovations. And finally, he is also an expert panel for the Department of Standard Malaysia for Kelulut Honey under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, mostly from 2016. So this is just a, a small part of his very extensive achievement that I am currently reading. So without further ado, I would like to hand on the session to pass the session to Dr. Ame for a 30 minutes presentation. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rashdan, um, uh, the moderator for today, and also my friend. Um, and also, uh, thank you to Malaysian Board of Technologies uh, for inviting us uh, for this webinar session. And so now I will click the presentation. Okay, so the presentation title is, um, so wait a second. Can I check uh, whether or not um, I'm heard clearly? Can you hear me? Okay, all right, okay. So I will go to the presentation. So the presentation title is Nano X Beyond the Buzzword, where X you can uh, replace with anything, uh, whether it is science, technology, a nano a particle, nano. Um, well, nowadays you would probably hear. Um, many things, nano fertilizer, nano uh, uh, polymers, and so on. Okay, nano uh, detector. Okay, so many many things are uh, uh, made um, with the the uh, combination of the word nano. So it becomes a buzzword. But today we want to see what is beyond the buzzword. Okay, um, I'll uh, I. Uh, uh, we will discuss in this talk in, 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 in four parts. Uh, first, why and what about the nano. Um, and second is the nano uh, tech contributions. 
okay and the third one is uh, some of the challenges and the fourth one lastly uh, is uh, a little bit of my research in nanotechnology so um, if you go to uh, a portal nano.nature.com where uh, you, you can have a, a lot of resources um, about nanotechnology and nanoscience you will see that up to uh, today there is uh, more than 300,000 nanomaterials invented okay almost 1 million nanotechnology articles and what's more is uh, more than 24 million nanotechnology patterns so it shows that the nanotechnology market is really growing and it's growing fast and today it's, it's estimated uh, the market value of nanotechnology is about one trillion us dollar a little bit of history um, um, in 1959 a famous physicist uh, richard Feynman um, demonstrate how to control a, a, a particle okay so there's famous uh, quote uh, that he said there is plenty uh, of room at the bottom which indicates that a lot of exploration can be made okay at the bottom why he said the bottom because we we always look up okay but we never uh, we uh, rarely uh, uh, see at what, what, what happened at the bottom so he says that a lot of exploration space uh, that can be explored in, at the bottom. So in 1974, Japanese scientist uh, named uh, Norio Taniguchi coined the term of nanotechnology. So this is the first time nanotechnology uh, appear, the word nanotechnology appear. Um, 1980s, the, there, there are uh, many uh, tools that is invented to measure uh, a nano size particle okay namely uh, you can see here a uh, uh, scanning tunneling microscope that you can view atomic particle okay you can also use uh, more or less the same technology uh, for example in 1989 uh, here two scientists uh, demonstrate where they can arrange uh, individual xenon atoms okay in the shape of I, B, and M. So uh, this is uh, really remarkable. Okay, where you can you can have a, a full control where you can put where you want to put an atom. Okay, so um, uh, in 1990s up until today, there are a lot of uh, nanomaterials invented uh, and, and applied in uh, both research and our daily life. Okay, uh, 2004. Uh, two scientists won Nobel Prize for the discovery of um, graphene. So this is one atom um, thick, uh, two-dimensional material. This is very strong, uh, practically has no weight, is flexible, and has many applications. 2016, again, uh, three scientists um, won Nobel Prize uh, in uh, field of, uh, chemistry, specifically in nanotechnology, for the, in the, the invention of um, uh, nano car or nano machine. Okay, so you might uh, remember this scene. Some of you uh, might um, um, recognize this from GI Joe film, where a nano mite or nano robot eat steel. So is this possible or uh, probably possible? But I hope uh, by the end of this talk, you can have a hint uh, of this uh, possibility. So some quote unquote useful use of nano as buzzwords. Okay, if you um, we move uh, from the right, you can see the SIM card over here. Um, the standard SIM card, you call it SIM card. And smaller than that, you call micro SIM card. And smaller than that, you call nano SIM card. With, well, essentially the same, the same card, okay, but it's different in size, where you, uh, you, you put a nano to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to make it smaller. Okay, and iPod Nano, okay. Um, and also you, you have here from Tata Motors in India uh, that where they introduce Gen X Nano. So, so the cars, uh, um, I, I don't think it has a nano component in the cars, but uh, sometimes nano is, uh, nano is used to demonstrate it is smart, small, uh, cool, okay. Whether or not it has nano component in it, um, uh, it is a different uh, discussion. Okay, in, in our class, we do, uh, we, we make uh, some activity. Okay, this is for uh, to 
to uh, for us to imagine the scale. So you can have uh, we we have this activity called a universal ruler, where at each interval it is one thousand times uh, smaller if you go to the left and 1,000 times larger if you go to the right. So and the middle is 10 power of zero. So in this case, it's meter. So it's one meter. So if you go uh, one interval to the left, you have this uh, uh, millimeter, 10 power of minus three. And another interval, 10 power of minus six. This is micrometer. Another interval, you reach a nanometer, which is 10 power of minus nine. So then power of minus 10 with Armstrong meter is uh, the the size of an atom okay so it is important for us to to realize the scale of what we what we're talking about so to to uh, to have um, um, well actually uh, you can say like a, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter okay one over one billion but we our mind uh, it, it's hard for our mind to comprehend how small it is. So, on this figure at the left, uh, you have we have here a C60 full rain. This is nano ball. Okay, roughly to ease the calculation, uh, it is about uh, 1.3 nanometer diameter. Okay, and in the middle you have a size one soccer ball, which is around uh, 13 centimeter in diameter. And at the right, you, we have uh, the biospheres, the globe. So if we have a power to enlarge the fullerene at the size, uh, to the size of the this, uh, size one soccer ball, which is uh, 10, power of my, uh, 10 power of eight times larger, okay, the ball itself will be the same size of the globe. Okay, so there's a little quiz down there. Um, uh, what is uh, uh, 10 power of X? So what is the X uh, over there? Uh, some of you might uh, instantly know the answer. Obviously, it is uh, 10 power of 8, okay? because you have to enlarge it at the uh, same uh, enlargement scale. So that is uh, how small. If you can imagine the globe is the, the, the ball uh, that you hold on your hand, and a nano, uh, so the globe being a, a ball, okay, and the ball that you hold is the nano uh, uh, a ball of, of carbon 16 uh, fullerene. Okay, so what's so special about nano? Okay, when you go down to that size, it has uh, different physics. It governed by different physics where it has a quantum effect. So this is one of the quantum effects is in the field of optical because I work in in in, in the field of optical. So uh, for example, uh, uh, you can uh, see. Uh, a silver nan nanosphere has an absorption between 280 nanometer, okay, goes uh, into uh, the middle of visible light up to uh, about 600 nanometer, okay. It depends on the size of the sphere, okay. So it absorbs different kinds of light. A uh, gold nanos nanosphere also, um, depending on the size, okay you can have different absorption. So not just the size, depending on the shape, okay, it can also change color, depending on the shape. For example, if you uh, uh, make a nano triangles, a gold nano triangles, it's different from gold nano rods, okay? It's different from gold nano cubes, different color from gold to gold nano rice. Of course, you can have uh, same color, but you can also have different color. So this is like uh, 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 things that we cannot see. We, we, uh, we don't find it in, in our daily life where you can have a different size of material that, that uh, can uh, have different color. For example, um, if you, uh, we, we imagine a, a baby go, uh, uh, grow up to adults, you have different color when you're a baby and you're teens and you're adults. So this is uh, different kinds of um, physics that we see when you go down to nanoscale. Number two, what is so special about nano is uh, that the size coincides with uh, subcellular uh, components like proteins and also the most important uh, components in, in, in biology is of course the DNA. It's also in nano size, and also um, 
today we understand we understand how virus can impact can have a very big impact in our daily life okay virus is also is around 100 nanometer so that uh, is the, the 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 component that you can touch when you go to the nano scale so at the bottom you can see a lot of uh, artificial uh, materials okay whether it is a liposome, dendrimers, is a, a ball-like polymer, a gold nano uh, particle, quantum dots, or other kinds of polymer, is a, a nano tube. For example, you can, you have there nano stars. It's around a hundred nanometer. Also, nano crescent. Okay, so this kind of material can have a direct impact to protein, to DNA, to virus. Okay, of course. Um, uh, you, you, you can imagine now we, we, we hit with uh, the, the, the pandemic, but uh, uh, probably some of you realize that uh, uh, there is, there is uh, almost no nanotechnology that, that for now could help us uh, combating uh, the virus, okay? But in the future, maybe, okay? So number three, what's so special about nano is it has a very large area, uh, surface area to volume ratio. So if uh, this one, two, three cubes all has the same volume, but uh, the one at the left, one centimeter, one times one centimeter, uh, uh, one times one times one centimeter cube, um, has uh, six centimeter, uh, uh, six uh, centimeter squares of uh, surface area. Okay, if you cut the uh, cut the, the, the same material into uh, one millimeter cube, one millimeter cubes, and you will get uh, the increment of the surface area to uh, to ten times. But if you cut it in the size of one nanometer cube, you you increase the surface area um, uh, about uh, uh, ten million times. Ten million times. So this is where nanotribology or surface chemistry or uh, surface interactions plays an important role because you 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 really need to control the surface because the surface now uh, plays an important role uh, in nanotechnology so in part two of the talk what are the contribution that we see so far of course i cannot uh, uh, talk about all there are a lot of uh, uh, achievements in, in, in nanotechnology. So this is uh, the one that the invention that won a Nobel Prize in 2016. Okay, uh, three scientists uh, uh, made uh, uh, won this uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, it is uh, originated from the molecule that you can see on, on the right, uh, which, which is catenin. Two ring molecule linked together. Okay, as you know, molecule has bi vibration and it. Vi it vibrates, they vibrate uh, randomly, but if you link these two ring molecule, they will uh, vibrate at a, a, a very um, at a, a directed direction. It can, it will rotate and, and you can use this as a wheel. Okay, now you can link this kind of molecule to uh, a molecular chassis, for example, and you can have this this nano car, and um, some of the the, the the nano machines or the nano car uh, can really be directed uh, at, at at a particular movement, okay, using light. So this car has no engine. This car uh, has no fuel, um, but it, it just just use the molecular uh, power to to move, okay. So another thing is uh, you can have advanced material. You can see uh, this is work by uh, Merkin, uh, published in Science in 2015. Uh, it arrange, they arrange a DNA, okay? So they can, uh, you, as you know, DNA has this uh, uh, Watson-Crick um, uh, interaction, okay? Where A will uh, uh, inter uh, 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 interact with uh, a T, C will interact with G, and you have this uh, uh, scale of interaction, okay? And you can control them, um, you, you can make like, a, a, they call it a, a DNA origami. You can fold them, okay? So you can see the figure at the bottom, you can make a, a nano smiley using this uh, DNA. Uh, now they have a software where you can design DNA inside the software and you can make the DNA and you can uh, put it uh, together and it will uh, uh, 
uh, by uh, time it will emerge as uh, this uh, whatever uh, uh, shape that you fold. This is two dimensional, and you can also have three dimensional uh, a shape where you can uh, make this uh, a kind of nano cage. Of course, in, the in, in theory, you can put something inside the cage. Okay. And also, you can have a cancer detection using nanotechnology. So this is called a nano flare. Okay. Um, where you have uh, uh, some uh, uh, something that 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 uh, that can light, uh, that can turn on. Okay, that can have uh, that can uh, uh, give you detection signal, but it is turned off when it is near the, the gold nanoparticle. Okay, when a bad DNA came, when a bad DNA comes, uh, it will replace. Okay, it will replace the the one that will give you signal. And it uh, the, the the molecule uh, the red molecule will 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 go will detach from the the nanoparticle and you can have this uh, a light a red light the signal that uh, signals uh, that uh, cancer a uh, cancer is detected. Okay, another kind of uh, cancer detection, for example, this one when you inject nanoparticle into a bloodstream. So in cancer, you have this. Um, leaky vessel okay you don't have to put anything on the the particle it will leak to the cancer because of the this uh, leaky uh, features of the vessel okay but at the on the, the the nanoparticle you have this ligand called biotin which later on when you inject abidin it will strongly bind okay you couple a contrast agent with abidin and uh, abidin will search for the biotin on uh, on the gold nanoparticle and when it attach okay you can have you can you can view where uh, the uh, the precise location of of the cancer okay this is one of my uh, favorite one uh, this is nano dark body okay imagine you can you can have a nano film you actually uh, we cannot uh, feel if we have nano film on our body, we cannot feel it. Okay, we can. We, we it's impossible for us to feel it. Okay, even if uh, there's a lot of microbes in our body, we don't feel it. Okay, so if you have this, so this is about a uh, sub uh, micrometer. This is uh, 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 about uh, uh, the, the the thickness is uh, 0.8 uh, micrometer. Okay, uh, so 800 uh, nanometer. So uh, this one, okay, it can absorb almost 100% of light, okay. So you can control the absorption uh, uh, of uh, 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 material. For example, if you uh, look at the, the, the top figure, the uh, aluminium, aluminium has uh, almost 100% reflection of light. That's why we use uh, aluminium uh, as material for the mirror. Okay, and silicon has also a, a reflectivity, a more, a, almost uh, forty percent. Okay, aluminum nitrate, uh, uh, nitrite, eh? aluminum nitrite has uh, a less uh, reflect reflectivity, which is uh, twelve percent, around twelve percent. But if you put the material that you see in in, in, in the larger uh, figure down down here. Okay, it has a titanium oxide uh, with a particular uh, uh, cilia-like shape. It has a silicon oxide, a two-layer of silicon oxide. When you control the refractive uh, index of the material, it can uh, give you almost 100% uh, uh, light absorption. So this one you can use for, for example, in, in, in solar technology to harvest energy and so on. Okay, some of the challenges uh, in, in nanotechnology. So if you, uh, in the future, able to make a nano robot, which is uh, for now is uh, 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 not uh, quite possible for now. Okay, um, we, we, we'll see a little, uh, a little bit in, in, in when, when I talk about uh, my research. Um, so when the nano robots want to swim, okay, for example, uh, across the bloodstream it has uh, a lot of resistance because uh, the nano robot uh, has a very a large surface area to volume uh, 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 ratio okay so it will uh, it will face a lot of pressure okay so this is one of the uh, uh, challenges okay uh, perhaps the the the, uh, the biggest challenge is is how you want to, how can we um, uh, 
put together the nanomaterial to have, uh, for example, nanorobots. So this is uh, in, in, in the picture you you will see in the middle. This is the the, the tip of a needle. Uh, sorry, this is the the eye of a needle. Okay, you can see it is uh, large. Okay. It, uh, uh, well, in, uh, it is actually small. You view in microscope, you can see this uh, lush, and you can see at at the middle uh, a sculpture, okay, um, uh, a statue made by the the top down approach where you carve it uh, probably using laser. You can make these small things, but these small things is um, a size about uh, around one hundred micrometer so it is sub millimeter it is small but not yet touch the nanoscale okay so if we uh, do a top down approach in making a nano material a, a nano uh, 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 things okay it will be impractical okay so uh, we have to build using a bottom-up approach where we have to design a molecule okay and the molecule arrange itself to make the shape that we want like the one that we see in, 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 in uh, DNA material that make the, the nano smiley and nano cache okay so this uh, figure in A is a, a, a lipid molecule okay you design in in, 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 in in some way that will you can have a, like a nano tunnel or uh, this uh, nano cage or nano ball okay depending on your the, the chemistry of the molecule it can rearrange itself to make us the nano materials that we want so this is like a the 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 um, the, the only practical way okay the only practical way if we want to uh, to make we want to build a nano material Okay, so figure in B, uh, you can design protein in such a way, for example, uh, uh, in the middle, at, at, at the right, you have a capsid or a virus. So virus have has uh, uh, its own design, okay, to make the capsid, okay? A very special shape, okay? So you can tweak uh, the protein, for protein, for example, protein, for example, even for example, if you want, so we just design the, the, the building block and the building block made uh, the the larger uh, particle uh, the, the larger uh, architecture okay uh, and uh, for example uh, at C also you can have other shape okay uh, using other kinds of uh, nano uh, material that made by molecules okay so uh, so this is a, uh, really a challenge so we can make a basic uh, um, we can make a basic uh, shape of molecule, but can we assemble them into a non-robot? So at, at, at the right, you can see this is a made, of course, imaginary, okay, uh, nanorobot. Okay, we, we imagine that nanorobot is is like uh, is like that. They have uh, controllable hands, probably has uh, has a light over there, and uh, uh, probably has uh, some uh, chip, okay, inside. Uh, uh, the, the 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 robots okay but the truth is the robots is uh, smaller than the chip okay so we can we, we just can uh, we if you want to make a nano robot you can just uh, assemble atoms of molecules that you see in on the right uh, on the left uh, sorry uh, 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 this is a, a nano car also okay um, featuring uh, Fullerene carbon 60 as the wheel. Okay, you can put together and it become. Uh, so this is a machine that we see today. And of course, it is uh, kind of primitive. Uh, it's a very uh, simple machine. We hope in the future. Okay, so this is a, the, the the biggest uh, bottleneck that we have of uh, so far. The chemistry that we have to understand the chemistry. Uh, that we now uh, uh, don't have, okay? That can we, we we put we 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 put it in the molecules in the atoms that they can rearrange themselves to give 
the robots that we want. Okay, so uh, this is the, the the last part of the talk. Um, our nano exploration. Um, so, uh, well, uh, in in a sense, we're also making a nano robot. Okay, if uh, we uh, go back to this one, and uh, you can you can see at the left, uh, there's a very simple nano car. Okay, so now this is a, a nano carrier actually. Okay, so now probably I can call this nano robot also. So this is made by a PAMA molecule, polyamido. I mean, uh, PAMA is a, is a, a ball light polymer. Okay, and and at the the edge of the PAMA, you, you, we have um, a scouting molecule that can search for cancer cell. Okay, and at the same time, it carries uh, some drugs that can be delivered to the cell. Okay, it will especially um, search for cancer stem cell and then deliver the, the, the drug inside the cancer stem cell and then kill the uh, cancer stem cell. Okay, so it has a uh, um, few components uh, uh, that you, you, you can see here. Uh, and this, rearrange, uh, this uh, arrangement of these uh, components is what make a molecule or what make the uh, nanomaterials I believe uh, robots. Okay, so this is uh, another uh, research done in, in our team, um, where we made a nanoparticle as a healing uh, substance. Okay, this is uh, we done this uh, some injury in in uh, on a mouse skin. Okay, you can see comparing to the control, uh, if you use nanoparticle. Uh, as a healing uh, substance, you have a, a very good effect, okay? And also, if we uh, uh, plus the nanoparticle with uh, cellulose, uh, you can increase the effect, okay? This is another uh, technology that we are exploring. Uh, it is, um, uh, came from the uh, characteristic of gold nanoparticle called uh, plasmon, okay? So, Gold has this um, uh, uh, free electron that moving around on, on, on its surface, okay? This is a gold nanoparticle. So th this free electron has a special vibration that made uh, the gold solution uh, can be seen as a red solution, okay? So, but if the gold uh, uh, nanoparticle come near to each other, uh, the, the vibration of the, the, the electron called plasmon has a coupling effect where it will take a new path of vibration and that new vibration will uh, absorb uh, other kinds of light that we, uh, will absorb uh, um, lights at um, different wavelength that make the solution uh, from uh, turn the color from red to blue so if the so, uh, if uh, the gold nanoparticle uh, solution turns from red to blue you know there's some aggregation happening uh, in, in in there although you cannot uh, really see the particle uh, aggregates uh, if you don't use uh, uh, electron microscope or other special tools okay but you, you you can know from the indication you can know so if it give you a blue signal okay from red to blue um, change color, you can uh, you 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 know something is happening. Okay, so in this case, uh, we have here in the middle AGR two is a cancer biomarker. Okay, that indicates uh, uh, many cancer, particularly here in, in lung cancer. Okay, so if you can catch AGR two with a special uh, capturing agent, uh, you can uh, you, you you see okay uh, uh, in red or blue color over there uh, here. Uh, you can detect a cancer, and because it uh, it uh, happening uh, in uh, in in a form of visible color from red to blue, you you can use probably um, your phone because our phone has camera to detect the color changing. So this is also a, a research that I collaborate with uh, Dr. Rashdan, and we also uh, made uh, something that we call bio nano gate. Of course, you uh, don't see uh, any uh, gate shape over here. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, here PAMA uh, molecule is used as a gate. Okay, and uh, the antibody over here is uh, used as a key uh, to unlock uh, the gate. Okay, so the the molecule in the middle is uh, like a gatekeeper. So if 
the key comes or the gate uh, goes away uh, because the interaction of key and the, the gatekeeper is uh, uh, um, stronger. So this is how we made a, 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 a biomaterial into a nano applications. So I think that's all uh, for uh, my talk today. Uh, thank you again to Mbot and thank you to the moderator. So uh, I I give I give to the rest Thank you very much to Dr. Amit for his wonderful presentation. So we will now begin our question and answer session. So I would like to invite uh, dear participants, to please post your questions in the chat box that we have. All right, the first question that uh, I can see here is, uh, Prof, can you give example of nanotechnology used in the medical field in Malaysia? Um, okay. So if you're asking... Um, uh, in medical research, there are many um, nanotechnology uh, uh, are used in in, uh, in medical research. But um, so far, in the as for the application in the market, okay, um, um, we uh, we don't uh, we we have probably if we have just just a few, okay, because uh, for example, nano carrier, okay. Um, we have a lot of nano carrier. Our group also made nano carrier uh, for medical application, uh, but we don't yet uh, 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 reach the stage of uh, uh, the um, medical application. Okay, so in cancer detection, uh, uh, like I said be uh, before in, in in my slide. Uh, we can also use nanotechnology to detect cancer. Okay, uh, for example, uh, actually in in um, in research, some researcher um, also use uh, nanotechnology to, to detect uh, uh, coronavirus. Okay, uh, you can you can detect. Uh, I also have some some idea to detect uh, 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 the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, so it, it can be applied, but not yet in the, in the market. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amir. So the next question is, how long does it take to grow the nano figure, and what does it take to make it? To grow the nano figure. Okay, all right. Okay, this is uh, uh actually very very interesting. Okay, so when we make uh, things, okay, we want to make it fast. Okay, uh, of course. Um, so it is possible to make uh, things um, in, in such a fast way when things are controllable by us. So up to now, it is only practical for us to control a micron level okay, of things. So we can make it uh, fast. So we want also uh, uh, to use the same approach, okay, ma making uh, things fast in nano uh, material okay but actually uh, well uh, in, in nature if we, we see okay a lot of nanomaterials made by uh, 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 biological uh, things okay it ha it takes uh, it takes time okay uh, it, take, it it will assemble atom by atom okay and it will make a very nice shape but it takes time so I believe um, to in, in the future, if we want to make uh, a, a, a good nano structure, it will take uh, some time. Okay, uh, not 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 fast like we make uh, bigger things. 
okay i'm not sure if that answer your question okay so we, we we go on to the next one we got lots of questions here i'm not sure that we have time to read all of them uh okay. are there any side effects using nanoparticle to the mouse very interesting uh, i think uh well yes or no uh, yes because it is a foreign molecule it may have a side effect but in terms of toxicity um research has found it has no toxicity for example if you use gold nanoparticle it has no toxicity but if you use like a silver nanoparticle it uh, it has some toxicity uh, so it, it 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 has a level okay depending on the uh, material that you use the size of material that you use and also um, uh, the, the concentration of the material that you use okay thank you uh, we've heard of nanotechnology now are we towards pico technology uh, yes actually pico technology is 1000 times smaller than nanotechnology okay uh, if you move not 1000 times just 10 times you already reach a top you already the the uh the size of an atom so pico technology is actually a subatomic technology okay well it is uh uh ironic uh, to 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 say that when we go to pico technology you have we have to use a very large uh machine okay it's a uh, uh like uh like the uh, um, like synchrotron, okay. So that's very large, a few kilometers uh, uh, in, in in diameter, okay. Uh, so you, if we, we want to understand pico uh, uh, technology, but yes, we are moving towards pico technology. But there are, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of interesting things in uh, nanotechnology because, uh, particularly because, um, you can. Uh, control DNA okay so DNA is in nano size so if you can control DNA you can make a lot of uh, big impact in our daily life okay the next question I'm not sure whether I clearly understand the question uh, there are some pains uh, they call it nano pains in building that they claim it is antibacteria uh, does it does this kind of pain exist Yes, yes. This kind of pain exists because uh, nanomaterial can be toxic to uh, bacteria. So you can have a, an antibacterial uh, painting uh, made by uh, nanoparticle in it. Okay. Sometimes you can also uh, have uh, some coatings in, in probably if you uh, realize uh, some coating in your fridge or some coating in your cooking uh, material that have this kind of um, uh, antibacterial uh, uh, features. Okay, is it possible to use nanotechnology in metal treatment? For example, a scratch metal surface in major components where part replacement is, is very crucial. Um, so this is um, metal treatment and this is um, scratch. Can, can you uh, explain a little bit about the question? Let, um, let's say that you have uh, a part of an aircraft, let's say, that's been okay. scratched. So can you apply nanotechnology in treating the scratch region of the part instead of replacing a new one? Okay. Um, well, this is very futuristic if you want to want it to be automated. <laughs> uh, but I, I believe um, there are uh, 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 molecular uh, glue you can use, okay, to like... Uh, to, to, to glue back the, 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 the scratch part, okay? Uh, but to uh, replace the entire uh, uh, things that, that, that you have lost, um, the entire metal, it's, um, for me, it's, uh, and, and to do it automatically, of course, we, when we talk about nanotechnology, we want it to be automated. Um, it is uh, quite futuristic. Okay, so it's a question about nanoparticles. What happens to the nanoparticle after discharging from the body? Does it cause harm to the ecosystem? Um, well, uh, 
actually if you uh, something that cause harm to the a lot of things that cause harm to, to the ecosystem but it depends on uh, uh, the concentration of it for example mercury we have uh, mercury a lot of mercury inside uh, uh, the, the the sea, the ocean, for example, but is it in, in uh, a femtomolar concentration? So, well, actually, it is not so uh, dangerous to have a femtomolar concentration of mercury. Um, so, yes, it it can cause harm, but only if it is concentrated in uh, some part of the, uh, the the ecosystem. Okay. Uh did you commercialize the technology that you tested on the mice? Uh, the one that I showed, uh, oh, okay, um, the, the, the research that we uh, uh, did on a mice skin, okay, um, now it's in, in, uh, in research stage, okay, we have to, um, we actually want to pattern it, uh, but unfortunately, uh, somebody, some other researcher also use uh, 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 such technology, a similar technology. So probably we cannot pattern it, but we can uh, like uh, 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 innovate a little bit to make it better. And yes, we are uh, uh, planning to commercialize uh, any technology that we uh, see it is uh, possible uh, to market. Okay, is it economical in terms of cost for companies or industries to integrate nano inventions or nanotechnology in reinventing their products? By uh, theory, it is economical because you can have uh, bigger impact with smaller or lesser um, uh, 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 resource. Okay, so like for example, if I use gold nanoparticle, I don't have to use like not even one gram of gold okay so it is very uh, very little so the amount of gold also is 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 it's particular it is it, particle it's a uh, nanoparticle it's very very small so by theory you can have um uh economical in terms of cost but only if you are able to make the the material by yourself but so so if you are in, in if you are in the middle of the supply chain okay of course uh, the one that make the the, the basic material can, will sell you with a uh, little bit uh, 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 markup uh, price and if you it, so it, it depends on where where are you in, in in the supply chain so by theory yes it is economical Okay, our last question for today. Are there any nanotechnology being applied in drone application or drone UAV? Application. Unfortunately, I'm not sure for the drone application. Okay, so yeah. Actually, the first time, I, I, I got a question uh, uh, in, in my uh, WhatsApp the other day. Some people uh, asked me, can we use nanotechnology to help disabled people? Actually, it is a very interesting uh, area, okay, to help disabled people, okay, using nanotechnology. But as for now, I'm not sure. It's very interesting uh, area, but uh, uh, th there is a, a, a saying that that, that that say in the future there is no um, uh, no area is untouched by nanotechnology. So I believe. It can, okay, in drones, in helping disabled people, in many areas, it can, you can have this uh, nanotechnology, but as for now, I'm not sure. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ahmed. I think that will be our last question. Uh, I thank myself you. have a question for you, but I'll save the question for later. Uh, I would like to thank. Uh, as you said, Professor Technologies Dr. Amir Shahir for his wonderful and insightful presentation on the topic of nanotechnology that we had today. I am sure that all of the participants, including myself, learn a lot from, uh, from you, and especially on the topic of nanotechnology. So as a, as a reminder, I would also like to invite all respected audience to join our webinars for next week.
which will be covering the theme of cyber security technology and agro-based technologies. And to get updates on the details of the events organized by MBOT, including this webinar, this kind of webinar, please follow us on our website, www.mbot.org.my. We are also on Facebook, uh, search for Malaysia Board of Technologies. Uh, also on Instagram, you can search for Lembaga Technologies Malaysia. And finally, on Twitter, mbot.my. I hope all participants uh, have already filled in the online form that has been posted on the chat box for your proof of attendance. And this is also for your record of your CPD points and also to provide us with constructive feedbacks to, for us to improve uh, the organization of our future webinars. So before we officially end our webinar session today, again, I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Amir Shahir for his presentation and also MBOT, Malaysia Board of Technologies for organizing this webinar. And last but not least, all our respected participants for your time spent in attending and listening to today's webinar session. I can see from the webcam that has been accidentally turned on. Some of you are at your office. Some of you are listening while driving. So that's very interesting. But please be safe on the road. And thank you, everyone. And see you in our future webinars. I close this session with Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And thank you so much to all.